Hi, many of you know me. My name is Marcus. I've spent many years in the ballet world and the theater world, and I've been lucky enough to study with some great teachers and choreographers, and I'm happy to know many wonderful dancers from the great days of the ballet. Today we have a little interview with uh, Allegra Kent, who is a friend of mine, legendary ballerina. She's going to talk about her experiences with uh, her teacher, Bronislava Nijinska and Carmelita Maracci. And she's going to also speak about her early entrance into the School of American Ballet and her experiences with Mr. Balanchine and in the company when she finally got in at a very young age. It should be very interesting to everybody who's interested in the great days of the ballet. And I hope you enjoy it. So, see you later. Bye. Here's a little story about myself, which I know really well. <laughs> My mother put me in boarding school for some inexplicable reason. I thought, I think she thought the education would be very interesting. And I was nine years old. And the next year I went back to boarding school and I discovered I really didn't like it at all and I decided I wanted to be a ballerina but I'd never seen ballet but I'd heard of it and I told my roommate I want to become a ballerina and she said to me you're not fat enough to become a ballerina so I stuck my tummy out as much as I could. And um, I sent my mom a few little letters and said, I want to become a ballerina, so that means you have to take me out of boarding school. I, she took me out. I was 10 years old. And uh, we waited through the summer because Capizio said they didn't have the right ballet slipper for me which was ridiculous, but nevertheless, uh, in the fall, my mother took me to a studio. And whose studio was it? Bronislava Nijinska's, because she'd heard of Nijinsky. And even I had heard of Nijinsky. We went to the studio and she, spoke to the secretary at the desk and mom said oh I'd like to enroll my daughter in a beginner's ballet class and the secretary said we don't have any beginners ballet classes we only have middle and advanced so my mom said well let's put her in the middle the thing about Nijinska's studio was that it was right after the war or two years after the war. And there were many, many GIs who wanted to study ballet. As Colette, the famous author said, after a war, everyone wants to dance. What these soldiers didn't realize is that you just can't take up ballet when you're 27, 28, or whatever age they were when they had finished their military service and the war was over. And uh, there I was, 11, being put in a class with older men. And I didn't think anything of it until the class started. And we were at the bar, and I looked at the men, and they were doing plies. I didn't know it was called plie, but I saw you bend your knees. And well, the whole world bends their knees, so I could bend mine too. The whole middle of the class was totally confusing. All the steps, tendu, rond de jambe, after the bar, there was the center, pirouettes, jumping, everything you could imagine or which takes place. In a ballet class, 
at the end, there was a step, 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 big leap, step, step, big leap, step, step. And I was a great jumper, so that I could do easily. The beginning and the end. The bend of the knee and the jump of the entire body off the air. Raising high above the studio. Uh, but I was totally discouraged. Should I give this up? But my moxie ruled the moment. And I said to mother, or mom as I called her, we have to go to the library because I need to know the names of these steps. And we, I, I also thought that libraries solve a lot of problems because you learn more. And we went to the library and I took out quite a few books, including one called The ABCs of Ballet, written by Lakin. When I got home, I opened the book and it wasn't about the ABCs of ballet. It was a very uh, intellectual take on ballet, which did me no good at all. Um, actually, I thought, this doesn't apply to me. And uh, I thought, well, I'll just continue and try to figure out what's going on, which I did. It seems that I was pretty coordinated and pretty sharp-eyed. Oh, they're doing that. Um, okay, I can do that too. And I did. And then after one year, I was taking with Irina Nijinska's daughter, and that was the end of the GI Bill. And Bronislava had no real source of income. We were in a wonderful studio, but she moved to a carpenter's union that was a huge expanse of space and this little stage. And um, she put up some mirrors that we could look into. And of course, they were on a slant because they were propped up against the uh, slight stage. So of course, it was distorted. And her bar was the same every time. So you did the, the same bar every day. The plies, the grand battements were too Bergemiller. The, um, I think they were studies for the piano. Da, 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 that, that I was illustrating a tendu and a grand battement. Center, we did the same, no, we didn't do the same center. Every pirouette started from a second position, not from a fourth position, which was interesting. I got, I really received no details. I just looked. There were no, as I just said, details. It was very free for all. But when we went across the room, Karin, of Karinska, Bronislava said, from this corner to that corner, with a dynamic energy. And one class, she took my hand and I knew we were going together from hither to yon, and we did. And actually that day, some, um, the Ballet Russe de Monte Carlo was in town and they, their dancers used to come to study with Nijinska and they had done the steps. And then Nijinska took my hand and we did the, step and guess what we covered more space than the men well that was Nijinska's philosophy competition and dynamic energy and we'll do it better even though you're a kid and I'm an old woman and we did at a certain point uh, 
some of the mothers, the mothers sat on the bench around the edge. And one of the mothers said to my mother, this is how mothers communicate in ballet studios. So what the mother <laughs> said to my mother was, your daughter is not getting enough details in her uh, ballet education. She has to go to Carmelita Baracci, who is also a very great teacher and was still dancing, and she demonstrated everything on point. And that's where we went. And we didn't tell Nishinska because the teachers were very, you study with me, you don't study with anyone else. They were very competitive. And uh, we didn't tell her that we were going there. We didn't tell Nijinska. So that was a, a little segue into Carmelita Marachi, and who is on Highland Avenue in Hollywood, of all places, Hollywood. But that was not because of the glamour of Hollywood. That was because she could rent an inexpensive studio there. And we went up and looked through a little peek hole, and I saw Carmelita demonstrating on point for her students. And then she came out after that class, and Mother said, oh, we, my daughter, Allegra, would like to study with you. And Carmelita took my hand and welcomed me to her class. By this time, I knew I knew what a pirouette was. I knew quite a bit more than when I'd started. And I started to shake with Carmelita Marachi, who demonstrated so I could see the details. And in that class were some excellent dances, dancers, Janet Rule from the movies, uh, and many others. Judy, uh, Judy Prince, and some really very talented, Cynthia Gregory. And so that was inspiring. But what happened is that my sister, who was an actress, lived in New York City and wanted mom to come uh, live with her in New York City because my sister was getting lonely. Well, we wanted to go and keep her company, but where to study in New York City? That was a question we needed an answer. And we told Carmelita that we were gonna cross country. And she said, oh, my friend, Muriel Stewart, Muriel Stewart, who had been in Pavlova's company, uh, teaches at the School of American Ballet. So I'll write a letter to her and you can go to New York and present her with this letter. Carmelita Maraci didn't like Balanchine. I had never heard of Balanchine. And, but luckily Carmelita's friend taught at the school and we arrived that fall and went to the school. My mother said, we want a scholarship, but not quite like that. We'd like a scholarship. We don't have a lot of money. She didn't say that. And the ladies at the desk said, well, Balanchine isn't in town, but he'll, he'll look at your daughter in two weeks. And I'd really never heard of Balanchine, even though I saw a ballet that he had choreographed, La Sonambula, then called Night Shadow. And um, it, it, for, for two weeks, we had to pay for classes. And then one day, a man walked in the door, and all the girls in the class went, <gasps> and I went, there's a man 
walking through the class. And I thought, oh, I guess he must be Valentin. He went to the front of the class, sat on a bench. Pierre Vladibrov, who was one of the teachers there, gave us a combination. Glissade, jeté, jeté, assemblé, glissade, jeté, jeté. So basic, so easy to do. Balanchine watched that step for about four minutes and walked out. And I thought, well, what is he going to do? Will he give me a scholarship or will he not give me a scholarship? That is the question. Sounds like Jack Benny <laughs> um, in a movie. We went out and the ladies at the desk said, you have a scholarship. And Pierre Vladimirov was so excited, he he opened one of those little um, rolls of lifesavers and said, oh, have one. And I did, and he, they were called butter rum, and he said, rum. And I was a real smart aleck because I I had a butter rum lifesaver before and read the ingredients. and. There was no rum in it. It had vinegar in it to sort of make it taste like rum. But I didn't say that to Vladimirov. I didn't want to spoil his enthusiasm. And I studied at the school one year. I was 14 and at 15, Balanchine invited me into the New York City Ballet. How about that? I never really had heard of Balanchine. I never heard of the New York City Ballet. But Balanchine felt that uh, I'd never been on stage. I'd never performed. And, and perhaps he actually thought I had some talent. What? <laughs> the following year, I was an apprentice with the New York City Ballet. And it was true, everything he noticed. I'd never been on stage before. I quickly learned the corps de ballet in the second movement. And suddenly I was on stage, but before I could get on stage, I had to learn how to put on makeup. In those days, People, the children of 14, girls of 14 years old, really didn't wear makeup in the street unlike today. Today they start wearing makeup at 10 years old, but not so then. And I, uh, everyone said, well, this is where you uh, put on your makeup and where you'll put on your costume. The, court, the room for the corps de ballet. Whoa, I bought all the makeup, Max Factor, powder, base, false eyelashes, all those things, uh, dippity do to keep my hair in place. I never had put on a classical hairdo. And I started, started looking at the girl from the, the girl from the right, the girl from the left. And then I tried to do the eyelashes. That was a disaster. So ba Barbara Walzak, who we called Basha, said, well, this is what you might try. It's called beading. And I have a little candle. We'll light it. You put a little of this black wax in a tablespoon. You put it over the candle. You heat it, and it melts it's wax and then you have a little brush and you take the black and you slowly put it on your upper eyelash and I was actually coordinated enough, enough to do that and then I saw her doing all sorts of things and I did it and then the classical hairdo was a disaster dippity do more dippity do or and then bobby pins, bobby pins, maybe four ounces of bobby pins. 
it was like an acoustical helmet that I had put on. Ooh, are you telling me something, Basha? And then the wardrobe mistress came in with a tutu, and I looked it, I looked down, I thought, where are my legs? They're under there. And eventually, I think maybe I'd had a rehearsal on stage in the core, but not in costume, with the piano. And uh, it was my moment in the lineup of the girls in Symphony and C. And out we went on a diagonal on the stage of the city center. Yay for the city center on West 55th Street. And, and I felt like it was cloudy out there with the stage lights. And also the music was extremely impressionistic because it had to get through the layers of hair and dippity doo and hairpins, but I somehow got through it. And at the end of the performance, Balanchine didn't say a word to me. And um, what would I think? I don't know, I got through the performance. But Muriel Stewart and Madame Dabraska came backstage in a very encouraging way. And um, Dabraska had bought me a nosegay of violets with green violet leaves around the edges. And in the center, one rose, one pink rose. And I'd never seen anything so beautiful. And she said, this, this was the style of the first bouquet I ever received after my first performance from Pavlova. And this was thrilling, and this was the only really thing I understood, but I kept gaining more experience. And um, by the next year, I was a real member of the company, which was thrilling. I was also going to school my last year of high school at 15, and I was um, accelerate, accelerating, doing two years in one. Well, that's how we did things. We accelerated. At Nishinska's, I started in the middle. The end of high school, I accelerated two years at one, I graduated. I didn't know who I would go to the senior pop prom with. My sister was an actress, and one day she was rehearsing in our minuscule apartment, in the minuscule living room, and I, I heard her rehearsing, and I came out of the bathroom, and I had acne, so in those days they thought, you use a strange, brush, almost like a shaving brush with a lot of soap on it and that will normalize your skin. And I came out and she was doing a, a, a scene for a television show. And the person she was doing it with looked at me and said, what are you doing? And I said, I, I'm washing my uh, face. And my sister said, oh, this is Jimmy Dean and we're doing a TV show together. And uh, so I said, oh, and I watched the program. At the end of that year, I thought, oh, there's a senior prom and who's gonna take me? And my sister said, I think Jimmy Dean would take you because he he's a little unusual he, and he has a great theatrical sense. And I think he'll take you. And um, actually, he didn't take me. He went to Hollywood instead to become a big star. And I went to the senior 
prom at 15 alone. Thank you, Wendy, for trying to get me a, a date for the senior prom. And thank you, Madam Nizhinska, for trying to teach me how to go from hither to yon in the Carpenters Union in Los Angeles. That's my story. I love it. I hope you liked it. Thank you, Marcus. I love Miss Allegra. <laughs>